Hi YouTube, we're back with the EZO 1.5 liter uh, sailplane glider, power glider from Hobby King. And we're just getting done with the radio setup, the initial radio setup, and we're getting ready to assemble all the components together now that we actually have it um, intact. Now, the reason we had to start with the radio setup is because in order to get to the radio, we have to have the wing off. In order to get the horizontal stab installed, we have to have the wing on, which blocks all the wiring in. So that's why we went in that order. You wouldn't have to go in that order. If you had a servo tester, you could center your servos. One, one piece of advice, because this is moving around as a stabilizer, turn it off while you're working. That way you're not gonna run into a problem. Now we also modified our cabinets so that we can allow these antennas to get out of the way a little bit better. Um, you, you, I'm not saying you have to do that. It's certainly something I had to do to make everything work. Um, there's ample length on the ESC lines to where we're gonna be able to run this up and over the top. And our receiver is actually gonna tuck all the way down in here in a nice, neat fashion. Now, we are not taping this in yet, but we will ultimately, at some point, whether do a double-sided tape, or we're gonna go with um, a piece of plastic that's gonna be supported across these, to these um, lumber piece here. I don't know that that's balsa wood. I think it might be basswood there, because it's hard. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just trying to walk this in here and be as nice as I can be to the antennas. Now, if you're going to disassemble this, you'll want to put a small jumper, a male to female adapter that's going to go into the, the servo plug for both ailerons, and then you won't have to fish the plugs all the way down into your receiver. Um, but in my case, I'm not going to be doing that. And I'm not crazy about the way this thing is dropping down in here. It makes me nervous about pressure that's going to be applied. I think what's happened is I've caught the leading edge of that down there and I just need to get something in here to lift to lift that corner up. But just being real careful not to catch any of the antenna leads. I'm going to grab a flat screwdriver. Man, the devil's in the details when you build these things, guys. There you go. Okay, so now we're just going to tuck this back down in there. As soon as we can get the angle, then it falls. Of course, that's what I figured would happen. So you see these two antennas? They're just draped up here next to the uh, aileron. Well, that'd be the elevator and rudder. I believe the elevator is the closer one in this case. But we need to make sure we're especially careful at the point where it goes from black to white. Um, so I want to tuck that in there, but I want to tuck it in there neatly. So really what I need to do is I need to see if we have... If not, I'm going to have to get some forceps. I have pliers, but these pliers are pretty heavy, so I'll have to be super careful not to over uh, pinch the wires. Okay, I got a better idea. Because forceps are going to want to bite onto there, too. I just need these antennas to drop down into that cavity. I'm just having a heck of a time with this plane and every other plane I've ever built. Okay, so just guiding them down in there. Okay, second antenna's in. Okay, so now they're both in, but they're, well, they're not totally in, they're just partially in. Keeping in mind that they're gonna have to come back out eventually uh, to get the double-sided tape down there, very likely at least. I'm not too worried about it. You see how this, this is just going to drop down in there. See how tight it is, guys? You'll have to really manipulate these cables to get it to fall down. But once you have it in there, you're good. Now, being that this is such a light aircraft, what I might do is I might just take and stick a piece of foam just to hold this down tight. And I don't even know if we have to do double-sided tape. So now I'll just stuff these wires down in here. You don't want that thing able to slop too much because that'll change its true position within the aircraft, okay? And that's critical for anytime you're using a stabilizer in a plane, you want it to be part of the plane, but you don't want it so rigid that it picks up all the vibration from like the motor, for instance. Okay, so now the other thing we gotta watch out for is get these wires down in here in such a way that they don't get caught up in the mechanical linkages. Okay, so I'm just tucking these. Now, again, this is this is temporary but required because you have to get these wires so that they don't get bit by your control devices here. Okay. 
Now you could just stuff this in here in Hobby King fashion if you wanted, but if you're actually hoping that your plane's gonna fly for you, then I would recommend that you do it neatly as you go. It's a lot easier to do it neatly as you go. And we'll still be able to get down there with the screwdriver later on if we have to rotate any of the axes, meaning the elevator, rudder, or the uh, yaw axis, which would be the rudder axis, the aileron axis, or the elevator axis for pitch. Okay, so those two little pieces of carbon fiber go in there, and then that drops down just like that. And it really fit pretty good. It was just the cables that were a pain in the butt. Then I need to take this piece out of the bag. Now, one thing about this countertop you may have noticed is that it's uh, very easy to lose pieces on. So we're going to dump it onto this piece of white. And what they're recommending we do for getting the wing on there is you're going to use these bushings, these clear, clear plastic bushings on the screws. And that's going to help to dissipate the... Um, it's, well, it's going to actually make the head of the screw a little bit bigger up against the wood. And then we'll slide that on. And then this is going to actually slide into this piece of wood that's been wrapped. And give me one second here. We're almost there. Okay, i got to slide it off the counter. It's really hard to get your fingers in there. And these are the Phillips screws. They're going to hold the wing in to the fuse. Okay, so we'll just kind of center that up ish, get the first one started. Boy, that doesn't want to start, does it? That one's starting just fine. Feels like I'm going in a nylon. Okay, number two Phillips. I need some more threads on here. Mm -hmm, definitely. Guys, this 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 airplane so far, I gotta be honest, it's been maybe a little bit more work than I expected it to be, but that's just because I don't want it to be all crappy. You could spend a lot less time and still have this thing turn out okay. Ooh. So I don't want you guys to think, wow, that I'm hitting something it feels like. What am I hitting? Um, that's not good. I, I feel like I'm hitting something in there, so. I don't think I'm gonna hit the servo. No, I'm not hitting the servo. I don't think I'd hit the servo if I ran it all the way in, but it just felt like I was binding on something, so I'm gonna try this again. You gotta know when you're when you're having to force a screw in, you gotta know to back off and just figure out what's wrong. I don't know if it was just aligned funny or what, but it feels a whole lot better now going in. What'll happen is if you um, you try to force the screw in at an angle, you'll just cross thread the nut zert that's mounted to the wood inside there. And a nut zert, you see what just happened there? You see how it just slipped? Mm -hmm. What the heck was that? I don't know. See, guys, do you, do you hear that? I think I just lost the nuts here. What the heck? I wasn't even turning hard. Okay, so here's how we're gonna resolve this. Guys, this is a hobby key plane. You kinda kinda be prepared a little bit for this. Okay, so now I'm gonna rotate this. Just pivot that out of the way. I'm gonna to try to spin this, and my guess is the nut zert just came free. Yep, the nut zert came free, guys. So what I have to do, my only option now is to either hold it with another stronger tool, which I can do, or hold it with my middle finger and just let it spin. It's not spinning now, so I'm holding it with my middle finger. Just so I can get this screw out. It does look like it's coming out, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, that was convenient. Okay, so now I want to show you what happened because this is probably going to happen to you guys too. So this nutzert is supposed to be glued in here, okay? But what happened is evidently this one was instead of having teeth that's bit into the wood. Watch this. Can you see it popping down? 
It's about to fall and I don't want to lose it. Okay, see it? There it is. There's the nut zert, guys. That's what a nut zert is, okay? So the idea is that will get pulled up into the balsa wood or basswood, and then as you tighten it, it's gonna bite into the wood. Well, <laughs> instead of losing the nut zert, the screw fell down in there, of course. And of course I can't get it with my pliers. So what, what has to happen is I'm gonna have to ultimately, I'm just feeling up in here, it's as though there's just never, it's never actually bit into this, this plywood, this balsa wood, whatever it is. And so what I have to do to fix it is to get a screwdriver and tighten the screw really, really tight so that it pulls that nut zert into the, into the lumber, whatever type of lumber it is. So I'm gonna probably have to get forceps so I can get these two things now that I've dropped inside the plane. So we'll do that when we come right back. Okay. All right, guys, these are forceps. Long needle nose pliers would probably work. Straight ones might. Straight forceps, probably the last choice. So the bent tip will help you to get into this awkward spot. Evidently mine are magnetized a little bit. I wouldn't say that's normal. Now I can reach all the way into here, grab these out. Okay, so let's just double check that everything threads in properly. Yeah, it's going. It's just not going as good as I want it to. Okay, so now the objective here is to actually get this screw started so we can then force this to be um, held in place ultimately, okay? And there's a couple of different ways to accomplish this, but the easiest way I know how is to actually take and get this thing screwing in, get this thing to screw in, And this is an awkward process. It's an awkward process, but if you if you know that it's gonna eventually spin, okay, so you see I pushed it up into where it, it actually bit, okay? So now this is just the, the way the cookie crumbles. What I could do is at this point, now that we have a position where it can go, I can glue it in, which is probably what I'm gonna go ahead and do. So, Rather than depending on that mechanical action to always stay tied up in there, it's not gonna. We're gonna take and put a couple of drips of glue very carefully onto the, safe, the face of this that is if I can get the, the glue to flow out. Okay, pause it. Okay, so I'm gonna take and clear the nozzle, yep, so now that's working. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take and put a couple drips of this CA in on this nut cert, and I'm just gonna rotate it and try to get a little bit of glue on each of the faces. Okay, there's four faces, there's four um, petals, okay? Then, I'm not gonna worry about uh, kicker yet, but since we have the screw now attached, we can go ahead and grab that screw, and pull this up into position, okay? Once we lift this somewhat into position, then I can grab the screwdriver and turn the screw until it goes into the position that we expect it will need to be for normal operation. So that's not correct. Rotate it one quarter. That looks close. You see what I'm doing, guys? That Those pedals are bent up and they make the sharp tips. Those tips have to be in the right orientation, otherwise the screw is gonna be going in at the wrong angle, okay? So now that the four angles have been agreed with what it should match up with here, we can just set and hold this for a second. Now, we have four big drips of CA in there. I can already tell it's pretty solid. Um, but what I'm gonna do is just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna take a little bit of this kicker and I'm just gonna run it down you know, I don't think we're going to get away with that. I think we're going to have to spray it. So we'll see if we can just spray it. You know, sometimes these bottles, they don't spray upside down. Well, this one doesn't spray upside down, so I have to get it started. 
and then come in there from upside down. Okay, that should be good. We'll let that sit for just a second while we put our glue back. And uh, it should be good to go. Now we can go ahead and assemble the wing. Now you're probably wondering how long is it gonna be before the other one does that? The other one didn't break free, okay? So I don't think it's gonna be a big issue. So this one's done. We can go ahead and back out the screw. It's coming out just fine. The nut zert was designed in such a way that um, we don't have to worry about the glue getting into the threads. But even if they did, the idea is you'd want to let the, the glue set up before you take out your screw. Okay? So now let's reassemble the wings, get the radio on a safe spot, like here. We're going to put these two front points together, and they just slip into this little block in here. Did you give them a shot of the slipping into the block here? You'll have to shoot from the other side. You guys see that? There's a little key oh, that receives the leading edge of the wing there. And it, it's a pretty nice little setup, actually. If it weren't for that um, nut zert popping out, this would have been a really mm -hmm. quick thing. So, I mean, I wouldn't plan on that nut zert popping out on yours, guys. I don't think it's going to happen. I think I just kind of got lucky. I wasn't pushing hard. It shouldn't mm -hmm. have popped out. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push these wings in tight to the front. And then I can kind of square them up a little bit to where I'm satisfied with their position. Now I'm going to go ahead and tighten them in. And I'm just putting a very limited amount of pressure so as to not tempt fate with pushing out that nut zert if that nut zert was loose, which I don't believe it to be. Okay. So now when we get close to being tight, you just don't want to crush the wing too much. But you do want some downward pressure, and you can kind of see the change in the shape of this, this section here. That's all backed with um, balsa wood. Okay, so now this one, I'm tightening, 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 tightening. It doesn't feel like I'm getting very far, but I am because I can feel the pressure is slowly increasing. And what that's doing is it's biting the nut zert back into that plywood down there. Okay. Now we're going to come back over to this one. We're going to do the same thing. Now I feel pressure on both sides. That's good. This wing is securely installed at this point. Okay. That was fun. <laughs> Okay, so now we can actually go ahead and stick that battery in, which we could have done that earlier. Uh, oh, look at that, guys. Red light. Hmm. That's convenient. I didn't realize I was going to be there. So that will actually change con contingent on stabilizer on or off. But you can't see. That's actually just the radio module. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the reason we had to start with that, which is why we had to start with the radio setup, is because we need this thing on here so that we can then level our horizontal stabilizer off of that angle, okay? So the way this works is you just slip it in from the tail end. Let's hope this is sturdy as it should be. Push it in until it's lined up. There's two little um, grooves that I need to keep lined up there so that we can receive the vertical stabilizer. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and then the other thing we've got to do is we have to take this um, control rod and we're probably going to have to extend it out a little bit. Now you can twist it for fine tuning, but I wouldn't twist it for the ma majority of it. So why don't we get this attached if we can. Nope, we got to bring it out some. And you know what's really cool about this, guys? You know what's really cool? Do you know what's cool, hon? Yeah. First of all, we forgot the rod that goes between here, but that's okay because we got to open it up Take so we can off. extend that rod. So, anyway, in typical Hobby King fashion, the instructions didn't really tell us which way to do it, so we're doing it in the order that we figured it out. Um, the other thing is you can't stick this in because our clevis adapter won't actually be out of the way until we extend the, the length of them. Now, you could sit here with pliers and try to spin this out some, but you're not gonna get enough. You have to actually do it up here. So, all right, going back to it. Do you wanna pause it and we'll get this pulled off? Sure, okay. All right, guys, so we're, we're opening the wing back up. 
And uh, at this point, we're just gonna lay this out of the way. The first thing we're gonna do so we don't forget is we'll go ahead and throw this, uh, this rod in to stiffen the, the wing, make it kind of one contiguous piece there. We're gonna flip it upside down and then look what we're gonna do next. We're gonna take a screwdriver and we're gonna loosen this. Oh shoot, we can't even do that, can we? We have to actually take this off of the servo, okay? Jeez. Guys, you're gonna understand here in a second what I'm doing. We're gonna have to take that off, use the forceps to grab the screw, lay it in a spot where you can see, then watch this. Which one are we dealing with? I gotta verify I'm on the right channel. That's the rudder. So the elevator's actually the front one, okay? Mm -hmm. But we have to do it on both. We're gonna have to take this off, okay? So once we get that unscrewed, we can lay that out of the way. Now watch this, guys. You'll have to take this off and at least move it back. Now, let's look at the back of the plane together. Do we have enough to get into the controls? Um, we're probably close enough we could try. Okay, so then we'll take and we'll actually use a flat bladed screwdriver to open this. That's not flat bladed, there's a flat bladed. So we're gonna put it in the clevis and we're gonna try to open that clevis up so that that pin will be freed and then it will go into the elevator control arm, okay? Which is awkward to do and it's probably even more awkward to film. Mm -hmm. Come on. That sounds good, doesn't it? So it's wanting to kind of bite into the balsa. So there we go. Okay, so I've got it in now. Now I've snapped it, okay? So that's where that belongs, and you can see it's pulling it down a little bit, meaning it's kind of pointing the plane nose down attitude right now, or attempting to. So we need to probably, one of two things need to happen. We either need to pick this off and just rotate it back axially to the next. That's pretty close, but let's show the people why that won't work. That won't work because look how far off we are now. So as I suspected, we have to go somewhere between here and here. So we can try to adjust this clevis, except the clevis is actually buried now. So in order to adjust it, we're gonna to have to pull this off. How in the heck are we gonna do that? I have no idea. Cause you're gonna to have to, okay, so the only option would be to take that and flip it around 180 degrees so that you can tighten the set screw, which is on the bottom so that you can move the push rod out to the desired length for mechanical trim. What a pain in the butt, guys. Okay, so instead, we're gonna come back around. That's pretty close right there. Look at that, that looks pretty close right there. Okay, see where we are? So we're just gonna leave it where it is now. We're close enough to where the trim up and down is not gonna be so egregious that we can't live with it, okay? You know why it looks good? Because the wing got pulled into a different position. This has to be seated all the way up into the saddle. Okay guys? We may have to disassemble this in a little bit just so we can adjust that. There's no getting around it. But for now, we're gonna leave it. Oh goodness gracious, what came first? The chicken or the egg, Hobby King? So now, we're gonna assemble this And we have to brace this while we spin this to being vertical, okay? It's got to be vertical so that we want it to be this way so we can pop it out if we have to for mechanical adjustment. It's not one thing, it's another. Okay, so take this and pop that open. Just like that. And this time I'm gonna try to just kinda force this down and then slip it in. Okay, that part was 
pretty, pretty straightforward, okay? Now I'm gonna attempt to mechanically insert this and see how far off the rudder is. Okay, so the rudder's pulling a little bit this way. Oh man, it's, very, it's close. I mean, we're not perfect. This would be, that would be pretty close right there. This is not, that is. So really what we're gonna have to do on this one is we're gonna have to take and twist it out probably one and a half turns. So we can either leave it attached or we can deattach it. And honestly, I think it might be just as easy to leave it attached. What are you twisting? Oh. So I'm gonna try to hold that. Nope, we gotta take it out. There's no way. We'll end up breaking it for sure. I have a feeling we're gonna break it anyway, just taking it apart, guys. Oh, I don't understand why these manufacturers like to use these balsa wood things. Like this clevis, like really, you couldn't have done that with a piece of plastic. We only sell like 4,000 different types of those. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to spin this out. We have to lengthen this just a little bit, okay? Oh, I popped it off the servo. Shoot, I guess I don't even know if it's going to be a line now because that, that was probably popped off, wasn't it? Well, I think it just happened, but I don't know. You're going to have to... Let's put the screw, put back, screw in. back in. Yeah, let's put the screws back in. <laughs> well, at least you can watch this and fast forward, guys. If you're doing it yourself, there's no fast forward button. That would be kind of nice, though, if there was. Okay, so we'll get the elevator one back in as well. Now I'm going to do myself a huge favor right now and do something that I should have done earlier. Think I would need to, which is I'm just going to do an E for elevator and then an R for rudder. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to try to screw this out. There's one half, there's one, there's one and a half, there's two. Okay, so that should hypothetically get us where we need to be. That's close, it's really close. If I have to get it another half a turn, I don't think it's going to be right. I think it's going to be too much if we go a full turn. But if we go half a turn, it's going to be hard to clip it in there. Hmm. I don't know. I think... Nah, I think we got to go with where it is. We'll just have to do an electric electronic adjustment. Okay, so now that that's fit in there... Ah, that doesn't look so good now. That's because this is still loose, guys. So once it's not loose, then those adjustments will not be so adjustable. Looks like to trim that out to square, that took 58. So it's too much, in other words. Let's get in there again with the screwdriver and twist the screwdriver pop it out <clears throat> it's super convenient mm -hmm. so guys in case you're wondering um, when you're you know trying to decide what to buy when you look at the price point of a horizon hobby plane compared to a hobby king plane this is kind of some of the stuff that you're you're going to you're going to reduce the chances of running into with a more expensive plane because a lot of that stuff has been engineered out. I Meaning they paid somebody that's smarter than me to figure out how to do it without having all these problems, okay? And uh, that's that's a desirable thing. As you get into this hobby more and more, you'll decide 
that that's worth a couple extra bucks here and there. However, in my nuts, or does it seem like we still don't have quite enough? Yeah. Did we not turn it out? No, you did. I turned it out the right way, didn't I? I'm, yeah, I think so. It's I, better, but it's just not perfect. Not enough. You're at 30 minutes, by the way. Okay. Well, guys, we'll come back. There'll be part two of the build. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check the description below um, for items that you can buy help support our channel from the affiliate links.